the time has come. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. Now, I learned this trick recently. Let's see if this works. Oh, wait, hang on. Well, I guess that's not going to work. I guess we're going to have to do it manually. Well, let's get going. It's good to not be the only one under here trying to work under this car. Oh man. It'll be really hard to get video under here. I'm gonna do my best. I don't exactly have a lift, so we kind of just got a deal. The new transmission uh, reuses this old bell housing. So if I can just get the transmission off without having to lower the engine, that would be great. I can just leave everything intact. The drive shaft has to come out. But we drain the fluid first because <laughs> I've made that mistake before. <laughs> you pull the drive shaft out and suddenly your fluid likes to come out with it, whether you want it to or not. So I'm going to go ahead and get the fluid drained and then we will start seeing if we can get this puppy out. Alright, so now I'm going to take the drive shaft out and then we're going to take a look at the new slip yoke that I got and see if it'll even match up to this drive shaft U-joint. I have a feeling it's not going to, so we're going to have to do something creative. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. All right, got all the bolts out for the drive shaft. I got my drive shaft hoop out. And it should just come right out. Oh, nice. Well, it was kind of as I suspected. Here's the new slip yoke. The old one is less splines than the new T56 Magnum, and so you get this slip yoke adapter uh, to mount up to your drive shaft, and unfortunately, it looks like we have different size U joints. So, I'm gonna have to sort this puppy out. I'm gonna take this apart and then just see what I'm working with. I'm honestly amazed that that didn't take off on the rocket. So this is the new slip yoke. This is the old slip yoke. And uh, I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to look up and see if I can find some type of adapter. This doesn't mean we can't get the transmission in still. This is just something we have to do before we can actually drive the car. Well, I found an adapter for the universal joint. It's a 1350 to a 1310. So it was a 1310 universal joint that was on my drive shaft and my new yoke is 1350. So I just was able to find an adapter on Amazon and that should be here tomorrow. So now I'm going to loosen all these bolts holding the old T56 to the bell housing. I'm just going to crack them loose and then I'm going to get my transmission jack under it and <clears throat> loosen the bolts, take these bolts out for uh, the transmission mount. And then I'll slide it back, disconnect the uh, slave cylinder for the clutch and then we should be ready to pull this puppy out hopefully i can get to all these bolts without having to lower the engine down
Okay, I think I might be able to get to it if I put my jack under here, take my mount off. If I take off the mount there, over there, I might be able to lower the transmission down enough so I can get to that top bolt. All right, I believe we are ready to come out. You see I got the slave cylinder disconnected so that can stay right in there. Clearly have all the bolts out so the transmission is detached from the bell housing. And now I'm gonna try to just lower her down. Well, I'll move it back and then lower it down. All right, so we got the T56 out and the Magnum almost ready to go in. But as I pulled them out, I realized we got some bolt holes that are a little bit different. So you can see on the T56, there's a hole here that bolts to the bell housing. Or on the Magnum, that's just not there. And then on the Magnum, there's three bolts on this side, three bolt holes on that side. But on the T56, it's got three on that side, but only two on this side. So they all look like they're the same for the ones that are there. Um, and they should bolt up to the bell housing, but I'm gonna be going from eight bolts to six bolts. Seems a little sketchy, but I'm just gonna send it. So the other issue I have is my slave cylinder where it hooks up to my clutch line hits right here and it's kind of weird but I think I'm just gonna take my grinder here my die grinder and just bore that over a little bit just take some off the top and the bottom and so this thing can fit in there nicely and then just send that too so since this is aluminum I got some aluminum bits that I just got off of Amazon and I've used them on aluminum before and they work pretty well. They don't clog up nearly as bad as some of the other bits you can find. So if you're trying to use a die grinder on aluminum, I recommend getting something like that. I'm just gonna mark this to where I think it'll fit. And we'll see if we can get that puppy in there. So these bits are pretty nice. I mean, if you're, you don't really need to push at all and you can get a nice smooth surface out of it. So I think we're good. I think we're about ready to put this puppy in. All right, last thing I'm gonna do before I put it in is uh, just put my slave cylinder back on and torque it down to 71 inch pounds. If you don't have something that uh, measures in inch pounds, you can always divide by 12 to get your foot pounds. Um, if you don't have something that goes that low, you can just torque to feel, um, but just be careful you don't strip those threads out. Um, this little thing you can get on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. I'll leave a link in the description. It's, it's a pretty nice little tool. Comes with a calibration sheet. So I feel like I can trust it. All right, so I got trans in, went in pretty easily. Um, all I got to do now is torque all these bolts to 37 foot pounds and button up a couple other things, rebolt my uh, cross member, put my little exhaust piece back on, and my universal joint should be here soon. Get that into the drive shaft, put that in, put some fluid in it, and we'll be able to start driving this thing. showed up so 
So I'm going to get it pressed together, put some grease in there and install it. All right, I got one side pressed in. I'm gonna put the clip in here and then I can press the other side all the way in and get that clip in. And then I can get it put into the drive shaft. All right, drive shaft's back together. Let me go ahead and slip the slip yoke. In and reconnect the drive shaft to the differential. Put a couple more things back on and we're ready to go. I probably should put some fluid in it too. We'll see. Or never mind. New slip yoke's bigger. And it doesn't fit. Alright, so I had some issues getting the drive shaft in. And I did some measurements. Unfortunately, after I got the Magnum installed in the car and found that the Apparently this transmission is about five eighths of an inch longer than the T56. And that was long enough that it made the drive shaft not want to go in. And right under here where the drive shaft mounts up to the front of the differential here, there's a nut that sticks out. And the problem I was having was getting this part over that. And so I was able to get it in but you're also supposed to have some clearance in the yoke so that you can slide it forward a little bit. Now on live axle cars, that needs to be a lot more than it needs to be on an independent rear suspension car like this. Generally, I think people say about an inch and a half is good on a live axle car, but I have independent rear suspension on this RX-7, so it doesn't theoretically move that much when your suspension loads up. Now I am able to move this a little bit. So I'm getting just under a quarter of an inch of movement, which may be okay, but it might not be. So I think I'm just gonna try it out. And if it feels like it's binding up at all, then I'm gonna have a couple options. Uh, one will be shorten the drive shaft and then get it rebalanced or adjust my motor mounts and my transmission cross, cross member uh, and like slot the holes so I can slide everything forward, you know, maybe a half an inch. All right, everything's all buttoned up. Now I just gotta put some fluid in it. And then we're gonna take her for a test drive. Well, she's running, she's full of fluid. I left this cover off for now so I could see the slip yoke and maybe try to take video of it while I'm driving to see if it actually moves in and out at all. I mean, with an independent rear suspension, it's not supposed to, um, but we'll see. Let you know you're in gear. It feels so good.
off there. The Magnum is in, tater's ripping. Got about 150 miles on it so far and new transmission, super smooth, feels great. Uh, every shift is just so tight and it's gonna, it's definitely gonna hold the power. Um, I am going to shorten the drive shaft. If I feel any vibrations, I'll send it off to have it balanced. I may do that anyway. It's probably the right thing to do, especially with a brand new transmission. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna put some miles on it, change the fluid over, and then we're getting back to the drag strip. So, next time, we're getting back to Maricart. I think we're gonna have to get a motor mounted up, start building a rear end for it. I wanna drive this thing really bad, so it's time to get going. Until then, we'll see you next time.